Now let's begin the web application pen testing portion of the lectures. My initial focus will be on the Open Web Application Security Project, or OWASP. To recap, this organization made a list of the top 10 most critical web application security risks, which is recognized as an industry standard. We'll be covering the most recent version of this list at the time of this recording, which was updated in 2017. Check out the resources attached to this lab, and all subsequent labs, as I'll attach the commands and several relevant documents. The first of the OWASP Top 10 is A1, Injection. This focuses upon the exploitation of poorly designed applications which are susceptible to attacks such as SQL, OS, LDAP, XPath, or Regjex injection. This allows an attacker to execute unintended commands or access unauthorized data by sending untrusted data to an interpreter as a part of a command or query. Interpreters regularly execute instructions written in scripting languages, such as Python or Perl. Perhaps the most prevalent version of injection is SQL injection, which is what will be demonstrated during the course of this video. SQL injections, as defined by OWASP, are attacks that consist of insertions or injections of a SQL query via the input data from the client to the application. Successful SQL injection exploitation can result in unauthorized access or modification to data and the execution of administrative operations on a database. Let's take a look at altoromutual.com. This is an intentionally vulnerable website used to simulate a variety of web application vulnerabilities. If you click sign in, you'll see an online banking login page, and it accepts a username and a password. Let's try entering a single quote for the username and a single quote for the password. As you see, we have a error. It's rather verbose. It has a OLEDB command string, which represents a SQL statement or stored procedure to execute against a data source. This is a clear indication that this website may be vulnerable to SQL injection. Let's fire up Burp Suite to see what a login looks like over the wire. First, we're going to have to set up our web browser as a proxy. So click Open Menu, click Open Preferences, Advanced, Network, Settings, Manual Proxy Configuration, put in the IP under the HTTP proxy, 127.0.0.1. The port I'm going to choose will be 9500. Remove the no proxy for box, delete all of the entry there and click this checkbox, use this proxy server for all protocols. Click OK. Start Burp Suite. Click Next. Start Burp. Click Proxy. Click Options. edit, change the port to the port that was selected in Firefox. Mine was 
9500. Click OK. Should be working at this point. Let's go back. Turn the proxy off for one moment. The intercept is off. So I'm going to enter username and password of admin admin. Turn the intercepting on in Burp Suite. Click login. Here we go. So I can take these parameters here. Copy to clipboard. And we're going to use SQL map in order to see if we can automatically exploit this website. So to do that, SQL map, I'm going to enter the URL. Make sure to enclose that in double quotes. Hyphen hyphen data equals double quote. And I'm just going to paste the parameters that I pulled here from Burp Suite. And that with a double quote. Hyphen P for the parameter. I'm going to try to exploit the UID parameter. And turn off intercepting. Right away, it tells that it is injectable. All right, so we have a payload here that will allow us to bypass the authentication mechanism. Let's go ahead and use that. Go back to the login screen here. Turn on the intercept. Click login. Now we're going to replace these parameters with what SQL map discovered we can use to bypass the authentication. I'm going to forward that traffic. As you see here, we're now logged in as the admin user. We can also do this manually from the web browser. Let's quickly take a look at how that's done. I can type in Jesse, single quote, or single quote one, single quote equals single quote one. Copy that and use the same thing as the password. As you see here, we're able to circumvent authentication as well. And I will go into more depth of how that works soon. Let's Go ahead and start up WebGoat. Let me go ahead and start up WebGoat. Java hyphen jar. Name of the WebGoat server. Hyphen hyphen server dot port equals ninety ninety.
localhost colon 9090 forward slash webgoat. The username and password which was selected previously. If you don't have one, register a new user. The exercises here are colored red. Let's take a look at the first injection exercise. Okay, this is relatively simple. It wants us to insert a string SQL injection to enumerate all users from the users table. Let's go back one. Here's an example supplied by WebGoat. This shows an example of a potential string or numeric injection, along with examples of what supplied text an attacker could use. As instructed, we'll be using the string injection for Smith, single quote, or single quote one, single quote equals single quote one. The application will execute the query and select all users where name is Smith or true. One equals one is always true, so it will return all users. Please note that the user Smith does not have to exist for this to work, so that knowledge is not necessary. What I'm going to do is Jesse, single quote, or single quote one, single quote equals single quote one. Click Get Account Info. And here is everything from the users table. What's happening is select all from users where Jesse, single quote, or single quote one, single quote equals single quote one. One equals one is true. Therefore, select all from users is output here. On to the next exercise. This wants us to insert a numeric SQL injection to retrieve all the users in the users table. Let's go back and check the example. Okay, here's a numeric example here. So this takes employee ID, or in this case user ID, equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or 1 equals 1, which will be handled by the interpreter as true because 1 always equals 1. Let's go back to 8. It says we can use 101 to see the data for one user. It shows the information for John Snow. So let's use 101 or 1 equals 1. Good. So what this is doing is select all from users where employee ID equals 101 or 1 equals 1, therefore returning all values in the table. Let's move on to SQL injection advanced. The first exercise here. All right, now this is asking us to try an exploit to join to another table. The goal being the discovery of Dave's password. Now, I've already done this exercise, and it was a little complicated, but I want to leave it up to you to figure it out on your own. If you're really having a lot of trouble, feel free to reach out to me directly through the messaging system or the Q&A section, and I'll help you out. Now let's go to the last exercise for SQL injection. Okay, 
This here is a blind SQL injection. It gives us no clues or instructions and just allows us to figure it out on our own. Instead of doing it manually, which is what we're going to do later, let's go ahead and use Burp Suite to automate this exploitation. I'm going to click register, try out these parameters, starting with the username parameter. So just make sure that we have Burp Suite intercepting on. Fill these with some arbitrary strings here. Click register now. Good. Highlight all of this text. Right click, copy to file. Name it Reb Web Goat Request. I'll explain why we're creating a file out of this in a moment. So what we have here is username underscore reg. That corresponds to the username parameter here. This is what it looks like in the request. So that's an important information that we're going to need to remember when we use the SQL map command. So I'm just going to drop this packet here, turn intercept off, type in SQL map hyphen r webgoat request. The parameter will be username underscore reg as I just explained. And we'll try to dump the database to get as much information as we can from it. Good. Shows that the parameter Username underscore reg might be injectable. Yes, we want to continue. All right, so we we're unable to dump information about the database, but we do have information we need to finish the lesson. So I have two payloads here that can be used. I'm going to use the time-based blind. So we'll just copy that. Turn on intercepting on Burp Suite. Go back to the registration page. I'm going to Put username test, same information as before. Doesn't really matter what you put in at this point. Okay, now I'm going to replace that with our payload and send to the repeater. Just drop that for now, turn the interceptor off. So just sending that to the repeater so I can see the response from the web server. So click go. Good. So I see from the response here, lesson completed equals true. And our payload has successfully created a user here. The whole point was to find a way to exploit a SQL injection vulnerability, which we have done. So let's go back here and see if I can refresh the page. Okay, yeah, it's still showing as red, but we just have obviously seen that the lesson is completed, so we can just move on from now.